If you need to build an ASP.NET Core web application and you want to deploy it on Azure, once you are looking for authentication options, likely you will get into Azure Directory B2C. And I have done exactly the same. So I have went through the documentation, found some samples, some guides, some tutorials, and I went through them trying to put this thing working. The problem is that it took me a complete day to have a basic sample working. So in this video, we'll do exactly that. We'll bring Azure Active Directory B2C into an ASP.NET Core web application. So if you follow along, you don't need to suffer for a complete day as I have suffered. So let's jump into the code. So if you are here, I will assume that you already know what is Azure Active Directory B2C, and we will focus on creating a web application using ASP.NET Core, and then we'll spend a lot of time trying to adjust the configuration of Azure Active Directory B2C in order to have this sample working. So you can use the output of this sample as the baseline to start working in your web application. And you can find the final source code that you'll be building during this video as a patron. So let's start with the first obvious step. We'll create a new project, a new web project. So if you want to do that, first thing that you'll give is a name, and then you can pick a template. And as we are used to in the .NET space, we have a lot of good templates that give the first steps. And usually this thing about authentication is one of them. So if we look into this list of templates, we can find Blazor things, API things. What I want is a classic model view controller, for example. And I will say that I want to use individual authentication with Azure B2C. So if you are building a web application that can be used by users from outside of your company, for example, this is a good option. So let's bring this one, individual authentication with Azure AD B2C. Let's create the project. Before running the sample, go to your terminal and run this command, .NET dev cert https now you can run the sample and you will see that you have the sign in option but once you click you will get an error message why is trying to obtain the configuration for a qualified domain dot name so it's using something that still doesn't exist so let's go to the source code once again and if we go into our app settings.json we can find this configuration here so these are default values that come with that template. This Azure AD B2C is something that you, if you go into the program.cs, you look for it, you can see that that configuration section is being used to configure the add Microsoft identity. So let's go into the Azure B2C and we need to start filling in those details, okay? So the first thing that we need, obviously, is an Azure AD. So what we'll do is to go to Azure. Once you are on the Azure portal, go to create resource, look for Azure B2C, and you have it right here. Create a new Azure AD B2C tenant, and let's give an organization name, the initial domain name that you can see that will be used, compose that domain right there. We'll need that information in a moment, and pick geography. And here is, is not the list of data centers, it's more about regions. And I want, for example, Portugal, that will assign the geographic location to Europe. Okay, I have an error because the domain name must be alphanumeric, so let me remove the dash. Okay, so now that I have that, I need to pick a resource group. I have one specific for this demo and I will create it. You say create, this will take a few minutes, and once it's back, we'll go there and grab the data to fill in that configuration file. Once it's created, you will get that notification saying, okay, you have a new tenant, so use that link to that Azure AD B2C that you just created, because now we'll need some data that we can grab from here. So let's go back into our project and start seeing what we need. Let's start with this domain. To grab the domain, go to the application and you can find it right there. Okay, just copy that and paste it. It also says that it needs a client ID. 
So we need to replace this. And now we have a client ID. If we go back to Azure, we can go here on the left and find this app registrations. There you can bring a new registration, a new application. So give it a name and you will want to keep this option selected. Accounts in an identity provider or organizational directory for authenticating users with user flows. The next thing is that you need to define redirect URI. So let's bring web application and here you will use for now the endpoint where your application is running in local. You can define a localhost address and then you can bring a new one also to define the one that you have in production. So for that, let's go to our application that was running, grab the endpoint, go there, paste it. And we need to replace this final part with something that is this sign in OEDC. So you can define another path, but by installing all those packages that we have seen in the beginning, you will have those paths in place already. So we'll copy this, go to the portal, add it to the end. Okay. So permissions, just leave that option there and register it. Once it's there, now we have the application client ID. That's the one that we are looking for. So copy that one, go to the source code, configuration file, and paste it there. And here is where things start to get confusing. Because if you follow the documentation, you will find multiple pages explaining kind of like the same thing but they usually will redirect to another page and eventually things don't match and it will not work out. So let's go step by step. So the first thing that I want to do is to run this demo application and see what happens. So if we start this thing and we go back to our application, click sign in, we still have an error. And that it still can't find out this thing, okay? And first clue that I have here is what is this? And that is what we'll start by seeing. So on our configuration, you can find this sign up, sign in policy ID. Okay. So that leads us to understand that we should have something to manage policies inside of our Azure AD B2C. So let's go there into the portal once again. And if we look into the portal, we can see overview, integration assistant, diagnose problems and manage should be there. So branding, it's not what we're looking for. Authentication doesn't look like. Secrets as well. Permissions as well. Expose API also. So why I can't find anything here saying policies. So how do I define that policy? So we'll need to go to a different place. And now do we get there? If you click this link here on the top, click there, you go to another place that looks like that is the same thing, but it's not. So on this one, you have more options here and you have this policies section. Perfect is what we are looking for. And there you have the user flows and that is what we want. On the user flows, let's bring a new user flow and we want a, a user flow for the sign up and sign in. So we can use the recommended options create. And here you want to make sure that you use exactly the same name that you are using here. So they are calling it Suzy, that I think stands from sign up user, sign in also, but feel free to name it whatever you want. So you want just that part after this prefix. Place it there. Now we need to pick some options here. Okay, we need to pick the email is the only one that I have here to select. Then we can define things like the user attributes and the token claims that we want. For example, if I want something like the given name that is kind of like first name, can pick that one and the email as well. So I make sure that the Azure AD B2C will collect those attributes and I will have access to them as a claim. So let's create with those options. Okay. And it's there. So if we go back into our application, reload, sign in, I still have an effort. However, one thing that I learned after a while is that these configuration changes to Azure DBTC usually take up to five minutes to apply. So usually I would wait five minutes when I change the policies or something like that before trying again, because otherwise I might think that something went wrong 
but in the reality, it's just the configuration that is still applying. So I will cut here and we'll get back in five minutes. Okay, five minutes went by. So let's go back into this and try again. So click the sign in, still have the same effort. Why? So if we look here, we can see that it can't obtain the configuration from this endpoint. We already made sure that we have this policy in place. So let's try to check if that endpoint is responding. So we can grab that one and it says unauthorized. Let me zoom in so you can see, okay, unauthorized. And what can we do here? One thing that is misleading in this sample is that you start with this endpoint and it looks like an official thing. Looks like that it's the perfect thing to do, but it is not. So I came to the conclusion that what you need is something like this. You need an instance that will be something here that will end up with b2clogin.com. And what will you paste right here is the name that you have given to that Azure AD B2C. So let's try it this way. Let's run the application. So let's get back, click sign in. Okay, it went through. So it looks like something happened, but even then I'm getting an error. So it, it's a different error, but there's something that I still need to do. I will have this message that is saying that there's an unauthorized client. So the provided application is not configured to allow OAuth implicit flow and your URI is no. So I need to do something with this hacker and what? So let's go back into our configuration of Azure AD B2C. In there, what you'll need to do is to go back to that first place where you were configuring Azure AD B2C. So here on that one that you have the menu different. So there, go to authentication and there you need to scroll down into this implicit grant and hybrid flows. There, now you can use the access tokens and ID tokens. You need to check both checkboxes. Save it. And unfortunately, once again, we need to wait five minutes and then we'll try again. Okay, five minutes went by. So let's go back and recheck what we have done. We went to that implicit grant and I flows, check both checkboxes here. So now let's retry it. Go back to your application, reload it, click sign in, and then you will see we'll go into a screen that is provided by Azure B2C. Everything that you can see here can be customized, but now you can finally sign up providing email and a password, and that given name is the one that we pick that checkbox when we are configuring the application. So let me quickly create a new user here. Okay, I will create a mailbox for that. Let's go to the application. You click the send verification code. Azure AD B2C will send an email on your behalf. You get the email, go there, you grab code, paste it, verify the code. Now what we can do is to define a password okay, and provide a name. Let's create the user and I'm finally authenticated. So I can see here that it changed from sign in to sign out, but there's something that is missing here. So if you go, you can see that this has a space. So it looks like something is missing there. So it should be the name. The reason for not seeing that name, the name of our user in the navigation bar is that in the token, we don't have that claim, the claim with the name of the user. But how if when we were setting up the, the flow and the configure, all the configurations regarding B2C on Azure, we picked the given name was the name property that was presented to us. The reason is that we didn't expand those properties and the one that naturally you will pick because it looks like it's the name of the user was the given name. However, the template that we are using to build the, our web application and the packages that we have installed there, they are mapping into the user identity, the display name, not the given name. So you need to swap one for another. And you will do that not only in the application claims, but also in the user attributes. Once you do that, now if you go into your application after five minutes, we'll get back in a moment. Okay, five minutes went by. So we go to our application and if we sign in and we say, okay, I want to sign up now. We can see here that instead of the given name, we have the display name. 
So let's create a new mailbox and create a user for that. So user send the verification token, go to the mailbox, here it is, grab the code, go back to the application, verify the code, give a password and enter the name, create. And now we finally have the username right here. By the way, you have another option that you can do to verify things like the information, the claims that are part of your token. If you in your registered application for Azure Active Directory B2C, you go to your redirect URIs, you can always register this jwt.mes. That is a website from Microsoft. Once you have that, you can go to your Azure Active Directory B2C, user flows, pick the one that you have and run the user flow. Once you do that, you can pick the application that is here from the list, but also the reply URI. So let's use the JWTMS and run the user flow. Once you do that, so let's log in with that user that we just created. And once you are logged in, we can see that the application grabbed the, um, the token and from the token is extracting the existing information. So you can find the decoded token and the claims here. So if you are in doubt that if you that you have access to something, you can always go back here and, and try to understand it. But there's one more thing that I need to share with you. You might have noticed from this demo that the user experience is not that well polished. There are some things that don't work right away in the way that you are used to in .NET. So you are, we are so used to go to file new project, set up some fields and we have baseline and here it's not that well crafted as at least I was used to. So you need to pay attention to those details that I mentioned and through the documentation will be a bit hard because you might find contradicting information through the links that are pointing to each other. And there's one extremely important thing that I need to mention before I go. During my experience, trying to put this thing working, I had some moments that I'm pretty sure that I had the correct information set up. I saved the change that I was trying to do in order to go back and retest everything. And in some moments, I waited those five minutes and five minutes after, things were in the same. So I wait five more and nothing changed. And then what I have decided to do was to go back to my configuration, revert the configuration, save it, do the configuration again, save it. And now I wait those five minutes once again and everything was the same, but now it was working. So it looks like there are some things that don't work that well on Azure B2C when you do those changes. Two important tips. Make sure that you wait those typical five to six minutes before testing it. And three, if you don't observe it, I wouldn't trust the, the system. So I will try to get back in and do another change or revert the change, apply the change again and test it again to see if now, in fact, it's applied. So I hope this was helpful to you. I wasted so much time doing this and I thought it was worth sharing.